Alright guys, so back to another episode of Dungeon Filler. And today, we are talking about the mighty fire giant. Uh, the more evil cousin to the cloud giants who we talked about last week. So, a fire giant is crafted and forged in war. Uh, it's a lot of their culture and a lot of what they do. From a young age, fire giants are sung songs of battle while they're young, and taught how to throw rocks at one another uh, when they play, even though, you know, they're giants, they're, they're playing, they're kids, they're still kind of shown how to, you know, throw, use walk, rocks as a weapon, and they are sung all these songs of battle and war. So, as they grow up and mature, uh, these younger fire giants are taught about battles won and lost. Uh, it's kind of like a, I want to say a rite of passage, but... It's a way to, you know, let them reflect and learn from the mistakes or the victories that, you know, their parents may have had. Uh, each fire, fire giant uh, is a skilled warrior and craftsman, um, you know, taught through many years of discipline, uh, how to craft and forge different items, and they are considered skilled craftsmen. So when thinking about the homes of fire giants, uh, they like to build fortresses inside of volcanoes or near them. Uh, they like really hot places. Uh, and if they build in or near a volcano, they will actually use the lava there to heat their homes and to run their forges. They like to build out of iron, and it is very common for the iron walls of their fortresses to be glowing a like orangish red from the heat of the inside. That's just how hot it is. Additionally, fire giants being evil and being more like warlords or tyrants actually take other humanoids as serfs. And it is very common that the area around the fortress is fields for livestock and crops. And then they will take these serfs that they have from conquered battles and have them tend to all this land for them. So getting into the appearance and more of the statistical nature of fire giants. Fire giants are huge creatures, as is they are giants, and they are known primarily to wear uh, heavy plate armors, usually in the black and red color. It kind of goes with their dwarven-esque complexion. They're known to have a beards of browns and like reddish colors. Additionally, their armor that they usually wear is usually fairly well crafted. They are considered skills craftsmen uh, in their trade. So usually the armor and weapon they carry are very well made. So these giants stand about 15 feet tall and weigh around 7,000 pounds, which is a lot. They are, you know, huge creatures. They're giants. Fire giants are considered lawful evil. Like I said earlier, with the, the serfs and taking slaves, uh, they're known as hostage takers. In a game statistical manner, their average, the recommended hit points are 162, but if you were to roll the dice, you could get as low as 91 and as high as 234. With the plate armor that they wear, fire giants have an AC or armor class of 18 and a movement speed of 30. They're large creatures, so they're not very quick. Their skills and proficiencies are as follow. Dexterity, plus 3. Constitution, plus 10. Charisma, plus 5. Athletics, plus 11, and Perception, plus 6. Additionally, they are immune to fire and speak giant. Now, just to get into their raw stats, they have a strength of 25, which gives them a plus 7. A, on the lower end, dexterity of 9 for a minus 1. It's their only negative stat. They have a constitution of 23 for a plus 6. Intelligence of 10 for a plus 0. And a wisdom of 14 for a plus 2. And a charisma of 13 for a plus 1. As you can see, like the Cloud Giant, their dexterity is their lowest stat at a minus one, but their intelligence and wisdom and charisma are not nearly as high. These giants are not spellcasters, and it kind of reflects in some of these more high-end stats that are more for intelligent creatures. However, they're not dumb. They're not considered like a hill giant. They are, you know, fairly smart at an average level, but are probably not likely to come converse with you and work things out cordially. They're fighters. They're made to be warriors. So their high strength and high constitution really reflects this in their fighting style. Now for the attacks they have, uh, like most giants, they have a multi-attack with a great sword and they will make two attacks. Additionally, they also have the ranged rock attack that is pretty common with giants. If you're looking to, you know, maybe make the attacks more unique 
or give them maybe a higher damaging attack. Uh, things you could do is have them, you know, maybe keep their great swords in the lava in their bases. They're immune to fire damage, so that should not hurt them. And you can have them deal additional fire damage on each strike. Or for the rock attack, you can have them hurl like pieces, of chunks of magma that are already heated up to get the same kind of effect. All right. So when I think of them and how I would use them in an encounter, uh, what I came up with just as a few examples are you could have a like small mountainside town, maybe near a volcano, and you could have this town being enslaved by a family of fire giants. It creates a you know kind of encounter where the either the party needs to go in, maybe empty the town. They might need to just you know go and kill the giants. They might have to climb the mountain. Gives the giants you know a home field kind of advantage of their own fortress. Could give it that kind of thing. Uh, you could use, have a large scale war uh, with you know maybe the big bad villain uh, taking fire giants as you know one of the hulking behemoths that fight in their battles. Fire giants are known for war and conquest, so it makes sense for maybe a large scale battle to have some fire giants in it as like the brute strength of the mix. And finally, you could have it just be a showdown inside their vol like volcano fortress. Uh, fire giants, like most giants, collect gold and loot. So you could have it where the party is just after that. That gives the giants that home field advantage. You can really use some of this, you know, mechanics of heating and cooling weaponry. Uh, could give it like an interesting home field, battlefield. Uh, fortresses are always cool to design. Um, you can fill it with different fire elementals and creatures of that nature. And finally, uh, just another note. Fire giants are lawful evil creatures. They are not good. So unlike cloud giants, where you can have good ones and you can converse with them, these ones you're way unlikely to. They're meant to be bad guys, and they probably will be played as such. Doesn't mean you have to, because you know the 5e book and all Dungeons and Dragons books are kind of just a reference for what you might want to do. But based on what they say, they're evil. So got to keep that in mind when. Go ahead and play them. Unless you just really want to flip the script, uh, you're probably going to fight the fire giants. Anyways, guys, that's been another episode of Dungeon Filler. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, hit the like button. And next week, we're doing another giant. I just don't remember which one. If you'd like to leave a suggestion uh, about a creature to do next, uh, you can drop them down in the comments, and we can maybe shuffle around our order a little bit and take those suggestions. But guys... That'll be all. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.